A turkey tag is only good for one week. And this week, uh, Sunday was Easter, so Saturday and Sunday were pretty booked, and I'm really saving my vacation for deer hunting. So it's going to be rough. Uh, I took one day off, played hooky from work, which was opening day Wednesday, and hoped to get it done then. However, I missed when I had the opportunity. The big buck serial killer missing? Really? Well, it happens to all of us. But I ain't going to let that put me down. I was going to get out there and get it done in the limited amount of time that I had. Turkey hunting to me really though is about the chase, it's about the fun, it's about the adventure. Uh, if I get a bird, I get a bird, if I don't, I don't. But it's the fun, it's the chasing them, it's the hunting them down. Uh, that's the thrill. And as long as you're on birds and you're seeing birds, that's really what matters. It's starting to thunder and rain out there. Pretty big cracks of thunder. I think I'll try and get a Thunderbird. We're going to hunt in a cemetery. <laughs> Dave's got a blind set up back here. You can see our breath. Yeah, this one. Pretty cold. Yeah. Pretty cold in here. So we walked out to the blind in a thunderstorm. And as soon as we get to the blind, soaking wet, it stops raining. You said you saw a big plot Tom up here the other day? Yes sir, he was standing yes, right, right in the corner. I was standing on the road. He was standing in that corner. I thought it was that remember that dark bush? Yeah. That's what I thought it was. And I put the put them in the hot said, monster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What time was that? Twelve o'clock. Oh, it's like 10, 30, 11 now. Yeah, yeah so. You know, and the thing we I, we drove the tractor down there, that blind flipped over. He, he he wants to walk in that field. He comes out there, he walks out the trail, looks at it like this, walks up the trail like nothing. You know, and he's going, you know, he's like, well, he goes, Dan's going, we still put the blind up? Oh, yeah. This bird, we got our own blind, we got a hate wing and a tractor, they see it all the damn time, you know? Yeah. About that. I said, they freak out about guys in camel walking across the field. Because yep. they go, why is the tree walking across the field? Damn, it freaks out. Oh, them. remember when we did those workshops out here and we had like 50 people? They walk out of the field and the next week we're out here killing them. Yeah. You know? But I've been seeing some good ones up by your farm, crossing the road, coming in here and out of here. So, like I said, that was that's a that's a 30, 35 pound drink. <laughs> I said no, it's probably a twenty five. Yeah, yeah they're kinds. a little lighter this year because of the wind. Yeah, well, God's only shot a thirty pound right here. You got no tail. Yeah, that's a sand hill. No way is that a sand hill. It's too big. It's got to be a turkey. Yeah. Looked out the back window here, and it looks like a turkey over there, but I don't know. Yeah, Dave shape. thinks it's a sand hill. <laughs> Let's see. It's uh, right over there on the, that land border. I don't know, the body shape does look like a sand hill. Dave's got a tag for later in the season. And he's got some friends who hunt his property. 
and uh, I know there's not a lot of birds over there, and there's that one big one, and I really appreciated him letting me hunt it. But deep down, I didn't want to kill his bird. And now that that hunt's over, I decided to go hit hit the public pretty hard and go back to the running gunning and get back to my roots. Well, me and Greg are slipping into an area to do a little call and we saw some turkeys over the hill here. And I looked over and what do you think I saw? Somebody's been watching my videos. Step ladder. Look at that. Well, you're not supposed to put it up a tree. You're supposed to put it out in cattails. So we drove the perimeter, that's all private land. The public comes in from over here. And when we drove by on the private over here, we saw uh, a couple turkeys. So what we're going to try and do is slip over the top here and call them up to the top. They're on the other side of those pine trees. We're going to get them? I hope so. Okay, you promised. I didn't promise. I promised yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. I was there goes sweet. the white truck. I told you he spooked the bird. Oh. Because that truck was parked by the parking lot. And then we saw a bird run out of the woods over there where he was parked. So he spooked his bird and got pissed and went home. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. So while I was at work, Crazy Greg was kind enough to drive around and locate birds along the public land. And uh, he called me up uh, as I got home and he said, Hey, I found a turkey. In this narrow little stretch of grass, where there's really not much cover, let's do a turkey drive. So it's like, okay. Crazy Greg claims he saw a turkey here go into this, so we're going to try and do a turkey drive. We'll see. You know, Greg's a good guy. He puts up with a lot of crap for me. <laughs> I'm not always the easiest guy to get along with or to keep up with. But he's a good sport. So the way we run and gun on public land is we drive around the public properties with binoculars. And we glass birds from the road. And we find some birds to go after. It's actually pretty fun, a lot of action, uh, a lot more exciting than just sitting in a blind waiting. He just gobbled way over there, way over in those fields. Unless it's a different bird. before we were going to set up, there was a gobble right over there, real loud, real close. And I wasn't sure if he saw me or not, but we hit the dirt, crawled in here, and got set up. And now we've heard two more gobbles since setting up over here. Uh, hopefully he's coming back in, but he got quite the distance before we got set up away from us, so we'll see. Straight out right here. Right there. No, right here. Okay. They're back kind of where they were before. There was, there's two gobbles, but both from over here. There's two 
gobble simultaneously before. Oh, I see one. One coming. I can see one by the pines. Okay, he's coming. If he keeps coming, he's quite a ways out. He's about uh, 150 yards. He's looking. He's walking this way. Okay. Yeah, he's just hanging there with those trees looking at us. He's not coming. 150 yards. Okay, here comes another one. The second one looks even bigger. Yeah, the second one's a big tom. He's really eyeballing over here. So when we got here, there's some roost trees over here. And it's like 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And one gobbled right over here, but it was right around this crest, and they might have seen us. We dropped down, crawled over here. And by the time we crawled over here and called, they're way out there. And, uh... Then we heard them gobble a few times out here, and they circled around back and went back, back over by the roost trees, but wouldn't come over here, probably because they, I think they got a glimpse of us before, but they don't seem real alarmed, they just won't come over to where they saw us. Um, occasionally they answer my calling, but they're moving around, and I think they went over the hill, but I think they're going to come back up. They seem to be circling around that spot, so we're going to try and uh, make a real quick, aggressive move over there, either blow it or we kill them. Or we don't. <laughs> so, uh, I guess this is it. We're just going to jump up and do this. Must have did a pretty good stalk because I uh, got to within 25 yards of a bed of deer that I didn't even know was here. He just got up and trotted it off. Hopefully he poked the turkeys over the top because I need to get a little bit closer. There's the deer. It didn't even run off. Now all of a sudden there's like a whole flock up there and they're at about uh, 60 yards. I don't think I got seen crawling to this tree. They wouldn't come in, they just paced back and forth. We could see them in that green field over there. And then uh After a while, I just figured, well, I could probably make a, an aggressive move and belly crawl because we got all this brush and I could get underneath the brush. And I crawled quite a ways. And then uh, the turkeys that we were watching slipped down into the pines, the roost trees. And uh, I was able to get up real close and I was going to get right to the edge of the grass where we kept seeing them pacing back and forth. And I just started moving and all of a sudden I see like five birds coming in from my left and uh, through a cornfield heading over towards those those pines and uh, so I had to freeze and then I was going to wait till they got into a tree line and uh, then I was going to make a move forward quick and, and call because I was laying in the bare dirt with no tree around and they got into the trees they started crawling forward and all of a sudden out of the corner of my eye I see more coming and there's like five more coming and I'd be damned if there's got to be ten toms bedding in those trees going in there to roost. I tried to work them, but they were with hens, and they wouldn't even gobble. But they were looking, they were strutting. One of them started to walk towards me, but then he just turned around and went back over by the toms, or the hens. So, now i got to contemplate whether it's worth taking off of work tomorrow. I'm supposed to be there. 
I could come back out tomorrow evening and just slide right back in here and try and beat them back. I don't know. I'll think about it. I couldn't get off of work in the morning. So I felt if nobody hit that all day, that I'd go back to the same spot in the evening. So there's a lot of birds in there and some really big ones. So Greg kept an eye on it. And he said nobody had been in there or in all the spots around it, but not there. So the next, th next evening, after work, we went straight there. So we're back where we were yesterday, trying out the old woodland camel. Uh, we're going to sneak over to the roost over there. That's about, uh, I don't know, 200 yards away. I slide in there, uh, if we can get there without getting seen, and uh, see if any birds do what they did yesterday. Couldn't get in here in the morning. Uh, they had me work. You believe that work wants me to work? What's wrong with those people? So, nothing seen from the road, and uh, we didn't hear nothing coming back here, but it's awfully windy to hear gobbling. We didn't see any birds when we drove around. We didn't see or hear any birds on the way back. But it was really windy, so that might have had something to do with it. And we sat there for about an hour without seeing or hearing much of anything. Then out of the corner of my eye, to my right, I saw a hen walking only 15 yards from me. The hen got so close and caught us by surprise that I think it caught a little movement or a sound and got a little buggy. So I was trying not to move at all, just staring at it and looking back where it came from. And suddenly I noticed two big toms up on the hill watching. And I think they were already on to me. It's the same two toms that were there the day before that were hanging by the pines. They wanted nothing to do with me. They turned around and went back into the pines. And if I'd have saw them fast enough, I could have shot them. But I was in an awkward position, couldn't spin around in time. They were within range. And I never got them on film either. A short time after that, an ATV fired up on the private land and drove through the roosting area. And all the turkeys came flying out of there and sailed off over the swamp. So it was pretty much time to leave. So feeling a little disappointed, we got up and thought, well, maybe we got like a, a little bit of time and we can still find a turkey. And we started heading out, and most of the way back to the truck, we were going through a grass, grassy field. And the field has a little hill in it, and we walked over the top of the hill with no cover in it at all. And I looked down, and here's a big tom and a bunch of hens. And they didn't see me somehow. They did not spot me on that hill, and I just slid down. But I kept my head up high enough to watch them. Keep track of which direction they were going. And when I had a direction of travel, we spun back down the hill and ran around the hill to where we thought they'd come out and set up. You know, some guys were <laughs> born for TV or born for video. They're great videographers, they're great at editing. And they come up with some pristine videos. That's not my expertise. That's not what I do. And if you're coming to my videos looking for that, you're in the wrong place. Me? I'm a killer. That's what I do. I kill stuff. I hunt it down and I kill it. Not great at videography. Not great at shooting video. I make mistakes. In the heat of the moment, when things are going down, if a mistake is going to happen, that's when it's going to happen. At some point when we were filming, 
I put the camera in my pocket and I must have closed the, the lens. It's got a manual lens. And I had been leaving it open so that I wouldn't inadvertently have it closed or have to click it open when a bird's around. And when I set up after seeing the turkey, I must have had the lens closed and didn't know it. With the sun blaring, I couldn't see the lens screen, but I could see the red light turn on recording, and I know my wide screen that I was getting the turkey in the screen. What I didn't know was that the lens cover was closed. This ain't even on. I can't see the... Oh my god, the camera lens was close, I think. Oh. Well, I got a turkey, and the camera lens was closed. <laughs> Come on. Got me a turkey. Can you believe that? I can't believe the camera lens was closed. I kept it open the whole time we were hunting. That's all right. Did you close it? No, I didn't close it. Sides of those spurs. You see that? Holy cow. That's a big public bird. This is a nice bird for public land, let me tell you. We were set up back here, and the guy drove through private land and scared all the birds out of there with an ATV. So we start walking out, we come over the hill, and this bird's in the field here with some hens right here. And we came over the hill, crested, we ran back down here, come around and set up. First we looked to see which way he was going, and he was kind of coming this way. So he set up here, and I was kind of expecting to come out the corner down here. Also they crested the hill up here, a whole bunch of them. And uh, the hen and the, the big tom. And it was pretty much of a poke, eh? Wouldn't you say 50 yards? Yeah. And uh, we got him. That's a big public land bird, man. Did you see the guy on the hill driving by glassing him? No, I didn't see Yeah, there was a guy up there glassing him. So unfortunately, it looks like the, the lens was uh, closed on the camera. I don't know how that happened. But, uh, it is what it is. Oh, those are some big spurs, eh, Greg? Yeah. You do a number on you. That's a big bird. That's a three-year-old bird, maybe four. It's over 25 pounds. It's a big bird. It's pretty heavy for the bad winter we had. Look at the size of that grape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Damn, that's a big that's bird. A big head on there. Nice. Where did he come from? I don't know. They, they were in the middle of the field here coming this way. And going that way, so they came from back there or someplace. Okay. Maybe even from across the road. We got really lucky because uh, we're coming over the hill to come out of here because our hunt got busted. Where we were hunting, we were hunting near a roost, and a guy drove an ATV into into or out of there. I think he was in there hunting, and he left. And uh, so we went to leave, and we're gonna watch for birds coming in from the side, but we went walking over the hill. We're in a wide open field and come up the hill and I poke my head over and there's this big tom and a bunch of hens. And he could have spotted us but he didn't. And uh, we raced back and set up on the side of the field. First I, I just got my head below the surface and just watched and made sure what direction he was going. And when we figured out which direction we were, he was going, me and Greg scooted over to the tree line over here and uh, got set up. And uh, I called a couple times, got no answer, no answer, and then I was just real quiet because it had been pretty spooky. And also they just popped up, not exactly where I expected them, but they popped up. And uh, the tom seemed to spot me, the hen seemed oblivious that I was there. But he was kind of kind of scooting around and acting fishy, and I thought if he got behind this one bush that he was going to take off. 
or at least go out too far because he's right at that, I don't know, what do you say, 50 yards? Yeah. He's right at the end of my shooting range, so I thought I better take the shot, and I had the gun at an awkward angle, so I just threw the gun up and shot. But when we, I grabbed the camera, I, you know, in the sunlight, when it's bright like this, I can't see the lens, so I just aim it, and it looks like the lens cover was closed. I don't know, I guess I'll find out when I get home and uh, look at it on the computer, but it's a shame because it was a great hunt. I mean, he was right out in the open when we shot him. I mean, it was pretty cool. There was four or five of them there. Yeah, they were all hens except for him. No, right? there was two toms. There were two more toms up on the hill. That's oh, what I, didn't I was see looking them. at. And you were shooting, you were aiming to I right. saw this thing. I wasn't looking at anything else. <laughs> when you saw, when you picked up your gun, I saw the other two. And I'm like, what are you aiming then at? Then it must have been the toms that came in yesterday. Yeah, and I what would have happened him. is if we didn't get uh, spooked out of there by that guy. We wouldn't have seen him. The way our setup was, we would not have been able to see the birds coming from this direction. We were expecting them to come from the other direction. And I think this is one of those giant toms we yeah. saw yesterday. Public land bird down. What do you think? Good. That's a big public bird, man. <laughs> Look at the size of his eyes. I know. He's just, he's a mutant. He's like Big Eddie in school. Remember that guy that was like eight <laughs> feet tall? Remember Big Eddie? Everybody had one of those, right? This is Big Eddie. <laughs> big Eddie goes down. Think he hit 30 pounds? No, he ain't no 30 pounds, but he's a good bird. Look how big his feet are, his legs are. He's big. Big bird, we should probably weigh him. I'm gonna. We'll go to my house and weigh him. I got scared. Alright. Alright, well, let's hit the road. Thank you for tuning in and watching the show today. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the subscribe button. See you next time. We'll be right up. Who's the rat slayer? So you got me a rat. Got me a rat. <laughs> Hold your gun up. You gonna go get me another one? Yeah. You think you earned yourself a 12 pack? Yep. Yeah. Alright. You the man. Are you another 12 pack? Yep. Alright. Slayed you a rat, eh? Give me a kiss. No. <laughs> you want one? No. Good job. <laughs>